Hey, it's Mike here, and today, vegan diets and broken bones. I mean, do vegans have more bone fractures? No, what are you talking about? My inboxes have exploded with you guys asking me to talk about that media blitz covering that recent study from Oxford on bone fractures and vegan diets. It has led many people to once again over conclude from the study that a vegan diet is bad, horrible, and some of the articles say 40% increase, some of them say doubled, what's going on there? We're gonna unpack that and we're gonna look at one major non-dietary factor that could explain this that I haven't seen anybody cover at all. So we're gonna crack that study open, look at some other studies as well, like one on vegan bone density, and hopefully get an answer here. All right, so I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, which brings me to how the Vegan Fitness Bundle is back. For $49, you're getting over $2,000 worth of awesome fitness and nutritional stuff. We'll talk about it briefly later on, but let's get to bones. First of all, to all the anti-vegans and meat lovers who are shouting from the rooftops right now that vegan diets are horrible because of this one situation, well, we have to remember all of the other epidemiology that is in support of a vegan diet in terms of a ton of diseases. And yes, this is observational, it's epidemiological, which is important still. It does inform caution and it also inspires trials as well to try and suss out some causation in a given issue. But once again, epidemiology only shows correlation and not causation, that's worth mentioning. But it is also worth mentioning that in the past, I've seen a lot of people, those anti-vegans, just throwing out all of that pro-vegan epidemiology. Hey, did you know that vegans have lower levels of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, hypothyroidism? But that's just all like epidemiology. It's just totally nonsense. Basically not even science. Like food questionnaires. I don't even remember what I'm eating right now. Three weeks later. Hey bro, did you see that vegans have higher bone fracture risk? Checkmate vegans, veganism is like actually officially over. Now hold on a second while I inject meat directly into my arteries with this new keto product called Meet Your Demise. But no, no, this epidemiology, they like. They like epidemiology now. And it is worth mentioning, even if you are to concede that this study is fully accurate, which I'm going to challenge a little bit, or at least get a little skeptical of, you concede that it's still way <laughs> worth it to take the hit of bone fractures to get all the other benefits with heart disease and so on, anyway. Looking to the actual study, which is from Oxford, in particular on the epic Oxford cohort, which we hear about periodically. And that does mean it is a little bit older. The data set did go back to 1993. So, you know, these are some old school pioneer vegans who are not as healthy as other vegans like the Adventists. As Dr. Garth Davis pointed out on Plant Based News, they only ate 20 grams of fiber a day, which is a total joke. And of course, you could say like alleged vegans at this point because these are people who reported being vegan like 19 to 27 years ago on a food questionnaire, which has meaning, but it's far from being perfect. These are also the lower B12 vegans from the studies in the 90s and all the newer studies show that vegans don't have an increased risk of deficiency or rate of deficiency. So they're different than what vegans look like nowadays. However, they still have a lower BMI, lower rates of certain diseases and so forth. And in case you're wondering, because so many studies like this have just straight up had like National Dairy Council underneath them or a beef check off, uh, this one's bias we will investigate. Uh, but right off the bat, there's nothing that seems like it would be detrimentally conflicting. I will do a deep dive, some due diligence at the end, but let's get right into those bone figures. So for total bone fracture risk, you are seeing a 40% increased risk for the vegans. That's total fractures, but it's when you're looking at those hip fractures that you get up around two times the risk. And this whole thing can be a little bit confusing because they did so many different models of looking at this, you know, ones where they adjusted for BMI and then ones where they did that and adjusted for calcium and then protein alone and then calcium and protein together. So they had five models, all with different results. You know, after adjusting for all those things in model five, for example, the increased risk of all fractures for vegans goes down to 30%, which is a little bit more modest. And we have to touch on BMI right off the bat because it is such an important factor here. You might not know that having an increased BMI decreases the risk of getting bone fractures. This study emphasizes how big BMI here is. Middle-aged women under a BMI of 22 compared to those 22 to 24.9 had almost 40% more fractures. 
Perhaps more importantly, it also literally lessens the impact, adds padding, lowers the amount of force that is transferred from the icy sidewalk directly to your hip bone, for example. Same reason that there's a higher survival rate of car crashes for people who are obese. It doesn't apply to every fracture though. For example, you don't have a lot of fat on your wrist no matter who you are. And so even when they didn't adjust for BMI, there was no real difference in wrist fractures for vegans and meat eaters. They did split things a lot of ways. And one of those was people below and above a BMI of 22.5. So it makes sense that for those vegans who were over that BMI of 22.5 compared to meat eaters also over a BMI of 22.5, there was no difference in fracture rate. It was P.19. And of course you have to be under P.10. And by the way, 22.5 isn't even overweight. That's just slightly past the middle line, higher than the middle line in the normal range. So for any vegan out there with a BMI of 22.5 or over, all of this information is just completely irrelevant for you. You're completely immune. What's my BMI? Oh, 22.4? Crap. Knowing that his bones would inevitably shatter, Mike preemptively encased his body in a full body cast. You can't get me, Fractures. You can't get me. But it is worth mentioning in the other model where they stratified out BMI, like under 18.5, the next range up, the next range up, the next range up, they were able to find a difference even when they matched for that for vegans having higher fractures. And part of me wants to be like, okay, that's it. You know, BMI didn't make all the difference. There's something else going on here, but I feel like it still might've made a little bit of a difference, especially when you read this quote from the study. Our interpretation is limited by the small numbers of cases in each stratum in these analyses, especially because of the strong correlation between diet groups and BMI, which results in very few vegans in the higher BMI category and vice versa, comparatively small numbers of meat eaters with a low BMI. A quarter of these vegans were under a BMI of 20. So because of that crazy disparity in BMI and BMI distribution, they would have had to just do a really good job to make sure that everything matched up. Let's assume that they did and let's move on. I'm gonna talk about that non-dietary factor, which could explain it all, but first there's one thing that vegans can do that would potentially really help here, and that is of course exercise, because exercise increases that bone density, which brings me very briefly to how that vegan fitness bundle is back. Strength training, in particular heavy weights, can do a really good job at increasing bone density, and we're talking about a ton of good material here. For $49, you get over $2,000 worth of material from a bunch of amazing vegan people. Again, you get that Ohm Booty program, which is now the Ohm Booty program to prevent hip fractures. <laughs> I'm totally joking, it's not. You just gotta work that side butt and you're good. I mean, if you can see it from the front, then you can see it from the... What? I'm told to, I'm told to stop talking about booties. I'm a butt guy. What can I say? Anyway, you've got a bunch of amazing recipes by athletes, nutritionists, meal plans, which are easy to follow, training programs with home workouts, which is key right now, yoga and mindfulness programs, which is a, a little extra key right now. I think we could all use a little bit of mindfulness. And trees, last time we planted over 2,300 trees. Boom, there's the certification. And now they're doing 10 trees per order. So honestly, <laughs> even if you're just trying to offset carbon uh, and not even trying to get ripped, you could just get this. All right, back to the bones. Now for that non-dietary factor that I believe could explain this, and that is totally out of left field, breastfeeding. No, this is gonna make sense. It's gonna make a lot of sense. We're talking a study that is nearly 80% women. And I noticed something was going on when I looked at the two groups and saw a massive disparity in which the meat eaters had a 75% rate of parenthood. Well, the vegan group only had a 34% rate. Yeah, the vegans were a bit younger, so that could have increased over time, but because the average age was nearly 40, it was unlikely to ever get near catching up. Now here's where it gets interesting. For whatever reason, maybe it's a metabolic mechanism. Women who have breastfed have have a much lower rate of hip fractures. From this study, which was also from a northern climate, breastfeeding mothers had half, I repeat, half the hip fracture risk after menopause later in life. This is super fascinating. The one potential explanation that would throw this out would be that women who were unable to breastfeed had another health issue, which just indicated a lower health state that could have led to hip fractures as well, but if that is not the case, then this is very powerful. So we are talking about around 70% of the meat-eating women in the Epic Oxford study having this added breastfeeding bone protection effect potentially. Well, the vegan group was probably hovering in the 30%, maybe a little bit higher as some had kids. And the reason for this disparity, 
possibly has to do with education level, possibly just has to do with philosophy. And for me, what is really the nail in the coffin here is that vegan men had almost no higher fracture rates. It wasn't statistically significant. So if it was just some issue with the vegan diet not allowing people to form dense bones properly, then the vegan men would also be seeing a much higher rate, but they weren't. Now, some other theories which are probably not valid, but I just think are kind of funny. Maybe there's just a bunch of nerdy intellectual vegans who are not athletic, who had bad balance before they were ever vegan, and then they all just had a higher possibility of falling because they were nerdy intellectuals. Another one which I like even more is that they were a bunch of alternative skater people who just happened to fall more skating because they were all like goth and stuff. Now I want to highlight a study on bone density in vegans, which I think is interesting just because it's looking at a totally different group of people across the world. We're talking about Buddhist nuns and their bone density. And I especially want to look at it because the whole notion here is that for some reason the vegan diet is flawed and unable to create dense bones. That's sort of the conclusion here, but from this study, quote, veganism does not have adverse effect on bone mineral density and does not alter body composition. Not a huge study, but worth mentioning. Anyway, let's move on to something a lot of you have been probably thinking about this whole video. Like, why is he mentioned vitamin D? No, the study did not look at vitamin D. They mentioned it as a limitation of the study. And again, this is that pioneer older vegan population where they didn't have a lot of fortified milks and so forth. But back then they were adding vitamin D to cow's milk. So the moment that you stop drinking cow's milk, based off that lack of fortification, that would increase your potential fracture risk by having lower vitamin D. But nowadays it's a completely different landscape. And another nutrient that I think is interesting, but I'm not super compelled by, and that is as Dr. Garth Davis also highlighted, vitamin K2, which is important for bone formation. He says it's possible that vegans lower intake of that could have caused it. And it's annoying because you can get it from fermented vegan foods. One word, sour kraut. That sounds like two words, but it's one. So even if this was the issue, it could have easily been remedied. And yeah, clinically, vitamin K2 supplementation has been shown to increase bone density, but only modestly, as this study mentions. As this other study mentions, research has been inconsistent between K2 and fracture risk, but they did an analysis which resulted in what they described once again as a modest decrease. But honestly, a 24% reduction in fractures is nothing to scoff at. Oh, 23%. Oh, wait, 24%? No, not gonna scoff at that. All right, now I just had to do a quick section here on if there's any potential conflict of interest, funding bias, and so forth. And it is worth mentioning that this is the same group of researchers that found the increased stroke risk that I covered a little bit back for vegetarians. And as I mentioned in that as well, they are funded by the Wellcome Trust, Wellcome, I don't know, Wellcome, which has a grant program that involves livestock, the LEAP grant, Livestock Environment and People. So is this just a biased body of researchers that mines the Epic Oxford data to make <laughs> vegans look bad? I, I don't think so. It's hard to scroll down to the bottom of a study like this, see the word livestock and not have a little bit of a warning light go off but it's more of like a general sustainability grant program. I don't think that, especially like the director would be pressuring the researchers to come up with an anti-vegan result. I mean, why not share this? Here is the guy who is in charge of that grant, really trying to comfort the audience about the processed meat cancer risk. It is a health risk. It's not an enormous risk. Um, it's like having a glass of wine a day. So there's an interesting thing, if you really do like burgers and things, then you might want to take that risk. If you really like your job, then make the vegans look bad. No, I don't think he was actually doing anything like that. Maybe there's just a little bit of a personal thing going on here. He probably likes to eat meat, so he's trying to justify it to himself. Also co-authored paper saying livestock production can have a major negative effect on the environment. Doesn't sound like the words of a livestock shill to me, but it is interesting to note that despite the massive amount of positive vegan epidemiology, it's been two for two on vegans looking bad and then there being a massive swarm of articles that come out after it. I, okay, this time I'm gonna let it go, but if they come out with a third study that is like, Epic Oxford shows that vegans are horrible, then I will feel differently. In the end, this study is meaningless for vegan men. It's meaningless for any vegan over a BMI of 22.5. Who knows if it's really finding an accurate result with how complex these models are. Maybe it is, in which case, 
it's still way healthier on all levels to be a vegan. But perhaps there was some weird little fudging going on with the massive BMI disparity, but if there was any single variable that I think through the study, it could have been the breastfeeding. If somebody has a strong case for why that is wrong, let me know, but 50% lower fracture in women who breastfed would have a large effect on a study like this that is 80% women. Either way, as a vegan, it can't hurt to make the effort to get enough of vitamin D, calcium, and vitamin K2, and of course, hit that booty workout, <laughs> get that vegan bundle, and uh, get that padding necessary to uh, never get any fractures. Fracture free. Getting reports that they've officially changed it to the vegan bone protection bundle. But seriously, strength training, lifting weights is great for increasing bone density. It's great for everybody, regardless of your fear of actually hurting any bones for aging and so forth. So you can check out my link below. It is, again, $49 for $2,000 worth of stuff. So it really helped me on the first bundle to make my way through the coronavirus adpocalypse that I saw. So thanks so much for everyone that got it last time and thank you for getting it now. But you gotta use that link below to help me. All right, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Share this <laughs> in response to uh, people who are probably barraging you with these articles right now if you're vegan and see you in the next one.